We have previously looked at a number of uh, density curves. Remember, those are continuous curves where we have an area of one underneath them. Um, and here we're going to look at perhaps the most well-known density curve, which is the normal curve. So basically what we do is we approximate a histogram which takes discrete data, right? We have discrete data points, meaning individual data points that we can count out. And we know that uh, we can create those, the height of, of each bar for our histogram just says how many data points, you know, what the frequency was for that category, that, that sort of sub interval. And we draw a curve over it to approximate the shape. And in this case, if we have something like these vocabulary scores that we have, um, this is, we're drawing in basically a density curve and this particular one is a normal curve. So what does it take to be normal, right? Well, normal doesn't mean, you know, what we, what we typically think it does, which is just sort of standard. Um, there are plenty of other types of curves, so this isn't always the standard, but it is, it is fairly common. So uh, what does it mean? Well, first of all, it has to be symmetric. But that's not enough because there are a number of curves that will be symmetric but not normal. So what else do we need? We need a single peak. And if we're symmetric and we have a single peak, uh, that's, that's pretty good. Um, but again, not quite enough. So we kind of need to describe that shape a little bit better. And it's going to have, we often say, a bell shape to it. Um, so the reason that we need all three of those is to get this, again, very particular type of curve. So you could have something that's symmetric and um, not bell shaped. So there we go. It's symmetric. It's got one peak and certainly not bell-shaped. Um, so again, you could have things uh, symmetric that have more than one peak, and of course that wouldn't be bell-shaped. So we need all three of those things in order to be uh, considered a normal curve. And so we have our um, normal distribution definition, which basically says what I just said, um, that we have this this bell-shaped graph. Now, saying it's bell-shaped essentially says, okay, you can only have one peak. I don't know any bells that have two, and it should be symmetric. I don't really know any bells that are not symmetric. So usually when we say bell-shaped, it kind of pulls the other pieces in with it. All right, but let's talk about some other common distributions. I actually drew one of them up above, which was a bimodal distribution now we've probably heard of the mode before, right? The mode is the most common value in a uh, in a data set, and so a bimodal bi meaning two just means we have two peaks for our data. Um, again, it's not necessarily that that data point is itself the most common because typically, again, these are these curves are based off of histograms, off of discrete data, so. Um, it could be that there are a couple data points in that general area that are that are happening most common. So we could have bimodal. Um, we could have skew. So skewed data um, does have a single peak, but then sort of has a tail. So this would be a skew to the right. The tail is to the right. Uh, we could also have a skew to the left, where the tail is is going out to the left. So that's entirely possible. Um, we can have a couple other different types. These are these are definitely some of the more common types. Um, you can also have a uniform distribution, which we've talked about actually previously. And this is where uh, we have, I'm actually gonna use a different color just to avoid confusion here. So we have something like this where all of the data points are considered equally likely. Uh, so this would be something like rolling a six-sided die, right? All six outcomes are equally likely. That's discrete, right? We have six outcomes. But if we turn that into something continuous, where we have sort of infinitely many outcomes, then it would look like this. Okay, and then here are a couple of examples of just changing either the standard deviation or the mean. So in the first case, we're keeping the mean the same. So basically where the peak is, is in the same spot. However, 
um, we notice that the standard deviation for this taller looking curve is much smaller. So standard deviation, remember, that means how spread out our data is. So if you have a small standard deviation, you're not going to have a lot of spread. So it's all going to be sort of clustered very close to the mean. That explains why we've got a much higher peak. But if you have a standard deviation that is larger, that means you've got a lot more spread in your data. And so when you spread your data out, the mean is going to be smaller, the peak is going to be smaller because you get a lot more data out here at the edges. All right, so the peak is in the same place, but not necessarily as high. Um, by contrast, if we have two different means but keep the standard deviation the same, right, we're saying keep the spread the same. Okay, well, so the general shape of these two curves should be identical. But if we shift the mean, right, we know that uh, the one on the left here has the lower mean and the one on the right has the higher mean. Um, granted, they both seem to occur at about the same rate, right? The peak is, is at the same height for both of these, but the location is different for the two of those. So that's just a basic intro to kind of the, the general concepts of a normal curve. We're gonna see what exactly we can do with those curves.